in this quick uh, broadcast, I want to take a little bit time here with us and there is a reason uh, for it. It's important people that um, if you are connecting here to you know pick up a piece of paper and a pen and try to write some of these things I'm going to say here. You will be glad and thankful to the Lord for connecting to this broadcast. I want to share some secrets that will put you ahead. That will make your spiritual journey faster. I will show you how to cut through the barricades, the barriers, the holds. And all these things, they exist. I want to show you how to overcome the kingdom rulership of Satan. When we talk about overcoming, it is not necessarily to fight with the enemy all your whole life palm to palm I punch you on the face you punch me on the face and we slog it out all our lives no to overcome in some cases you are going to find a different channel to achieve your breakthrough quicker than going through every single step of the way it's not everybody that know that they could actually bypass certain protocol to enter into a different sphere into a different place in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 you can see the intensity of spiritual warfare that it can go with it can go from one on one engagement to accelerated format where all of a sudden all the enemies will begin to gang up coming from the spirit realm coming from the physical realm coming from every direction job fought this battle that's what we call dimensional warfare, where the enemy unleash all his armies in a moment, gather them from everywhere. In those days, Israelites fought similar warfare where nations will join alliance and come into battle. Always you see that every time they you know they won, they took the victory. Sometimes they are fighting five different nations one time. Every time they took victories because the Lord showed up. So to overcome means that some warfare you will not fight. You will not you will not really have to fight it. Punch with the enemy and kick with the enemy. Some if you would take the time to stay with the Lord and continue in prayer and keep offering yourself spirit, soul, body until you offer your whole life to him as a living sacrifice. Guess what? There's no way that you can take somebody who is still alive and living well and just dig a grave and throw them inside the grave and cover them up. It don't work that way. The only way that they are taken to the cemetery for burial is uh, once they are pronounced dead. When you offer your whole life as a living sacrifice unto the Lord, they would gather all your remains, your spirit, soul, and body. You enter into a glorified state. When that happens, 
you are no longer operating from the physical standpoint. Guess what? If you stay with your enemy in the same platform, knowing that the spiritual warfare is eternal warfare, my friends, there are no way to end that warfare. No way to end it. Which means that the battle has no ending. You will war all your whole life and there's no end. Only time that you are going to find rest is when you rise above all of them. So when you look at the life of Jesus Christ, our perfect example, he fought ultimate spiritual warfare that no creation of God has fought, not Adam, none of his children. Some men and women of God may have come into certain uh, dimensions of intense, you know, in, uh, intense spiritual warfare, but not compared to Jesus Christ. You cannot compare the battle that Jesus Christ had to fight uh, with anything that God has created. They don't exist. No matter who you can point to. Not Enoch, not uh, 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 Adam, not uh, uh, Moses, not any of these guys, not in, uh, uh, Elijah. No. Jesus was given fully into the hands of the enemy. So no creation of God has died his death and none will ever. It's already written and nobody can fall the fall of Adam. These are two great events that are irreversible, incomparable. So, if you are dealing with dimensions of spiritual warfare, you have to grow in power to the extent that you are going to be consumed to be able to be fitted into a certain spiritual positioning. Outside of that, if you stay where the enemies are, and you share the same platform, you share the same location, you share the same territory, you share the same domain, you share the same atmosphere, you share the same environment, you are going to fight forever with no end. So you see how intense the battle becomes. Ephesians 6, Paul say, Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And he began to name different powers that you are going to deal with. And when we use the word powers, we are not talking about just one person. There is a gallery of great powers that are grouped up just like a nation having you know, jet fighters. They have different categories of jet fighters. This one is a first generation. This one is a second generation. This one is a third generation. Okay, fourth, fifth, sixth, and you can keep going. This is why, people, in the end times, God will raise up generational rulers, meaning that it's no longer going to be based upon people's biological and genealogical lineages or traces. They will meet certain criteria. They will you know, uh, travel the part of the spiritual realms and dimensions to conquer certain, uh, certain spiritual barriers and achieve certain spiritual ranking and they will be paired together from that generation their age will no longer be connected to how old they are physically but they will be connected to their records that they have broken the spiritual realms so if they have broken the record of Elijah the prophet, they will come from that generation. Generation rulers are the ones that are able to dominate from generational standpoint. Issues that has existed, existed from those generations, they are able to deal with them even in the present. So Ephesians chapter 1 and Colossians chapter 1, you see where the Lord ascended. 
The way to overcome the kingdom rulership of Satan is to overcome and to ascend. What you are overcoming is that you are relinquishing your whole being unto God. That's a quicker access than standing there and fighting all the enemies. You cannot finish on time with these things. You are entering into endless battle that can only intensify rather than slow down. No, the pace will get more intense. So when that begins to happen, you're going to get weary, you're going to get exhausted, you're going to get tired, you're, going to, you're not going to be able to function. So you see, some of them you are going to deal with. And you keep advancing, but it will reach a point where you say, you know what, I know what to do. I'm going to take my whole being and sacrifice all to God. Let God gather my remains, my breath, my uh, uh, soul, uh, my body, every single thing. And once he take everything into his realm, now you have your, your, his life will become your life. And his great power. And your position now is a place where the enemy don't have the capacity to reach. You will rise above them. That's what happened in Colossians chapter 1. Uh, Paul said that God demonstrated his mighty power when he raised Jesus up from the dead. What did Jesus do? The Hebrews chapter, uh, uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Jesus offered himself wholly through the eternal spirit. Through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he relinquished his whole being until he was glorified. And he rose above this, these powers. They, he was offered into their hands. They killed him. They were keeping a watch over the body by the unusual power of God, the unusual angels. When heaven opened up, then things began to happen in a different way. The body was taken out of the tomb. The tomb was opened. He had to. He ascended. He entered dimension to where, if you have to fight your way through these dimensions, you can't just. You are not going anywhere. This is why it's not just talking. These are real life experiences that are not avoidable in any sense. So you can take the harder way. Or you can take the easier way. Not easy in the sense that sacrificing your life, spirit, soul, and body is that easy. But through the help of the eternal spirit, God can change and transform your life and condition you to pierce the spiritual realms faster. And once your whole being is colonized, by the spirit of life, the spirit of God, then you enter a different life in God that is no longer sustainable just by the physical uh, environment and the physical atmosphere and the physical concept of living life here where you are subjected to the powers of the enemy or under the powers of the enemy. So you will rise above them. If you cannot ascend and descend, there are places where you are not able to enter in because they are highly secured. They are highly protected. Rams are highly protected. Rams are highly defended. So it's not every battle that you are going to stand there and punch the enemy and the enemy punch you. At a point, somebody is going to get knocked out. That's how it works. Palm to palm means that Whoever can absorb the punches more than the other one, somewhere along the line, somebody is going to crumble. So, we have to look at how these spiritual things work. You can choose to gradually offer yourself as a whole through the Holy Spirit, allow the Holy Spirit of God to take you deeper into the realms. Or, you can stand there and battle with your enemies all your life, spiritually and physically. Remember that once dimensions of warfare kick in your battles are no longer limited to the spiritual realms they will attack you physically also 
uh, from the environment, from the atmosphere, from the water, from the air, from the land, from the element, from every single thing that they could find. They will haul it at you to wear you out. This is why we ascend and descend. There's no way that Jesus could come out of the grave. If not, everybody will be coming out of the grave randomly. There's no way that Jesus could have ascended on high and made to sit with the Father of glory and ruling over all, 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 over, over all powers and authorities. This is the secret to him that overcome. The Lord wanted me to share these things to show you how. Because before, I was dealing with certain experiences. But the Lord said, turn around and show them how. You need the power of ascension. There are other dimensions of power that work together with ascension, which I will talk about. I have also written about them. So these things will allow you to penetrate where you're supposed not to be penetrate. It will allow you to come out of the place where you're supposed not to come out. It will allow you to rise to the place where you don't supposed to rise as a person. It will take you even if the enemy organize themselves to a point to where they surround you from every direction. Like the body of Jesus Christ in the tomb. Why do you think that Elijah was praying? And asking God, hurry up, hurry up, take me out of this world. They're going to cut my head off. That's dimensional warfare. Jezebel said by this time tomorrow, anywhere you are hiding, we're going to find you and we're going to cut your head off. Okay? So, once that began to happen, he had to run for his life. He can choose to run all his life or he can make a dash to offer his life wholly unto God and disappear into the glory realms. So he started, started banging at the gate of heaven. And heaven answered, let's see how ready you are to pick up speed. And they run a check on him and he was still a raw human being, they say. You need to meet the conditioning effect. The conditioning priority. So he had to fast for 40 days to meet with God at Mount Horeb. It was from there that he crossed Jordan. The flesh was gone. The soul, the body, when he stepped into Jordan, that was a burial. When he came out of Jordan... That's resurrection. When he said to his uh, 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 servant Elisha, if you see me, he was getting ready to ascend. And the next thing, the chariot of fire and the, horse, the horse, horses of fire and chariot of fire showed up. This is the things that only the glory of God can do. Not the anointing. The anointing only brings you to the gate of heaven. That's why when you climbed through the ladder, the ladder represents the levels of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But the glory is immeasurable. That's why you enter the life of God. And this is why you overshadowed by the glory. Because the glory is not poured out. The Spirit is given without measure, so God has to appear. That to reveal Himself. This is why we use the word of power control. The anointing is power management, but the glory is power control. It's where God consolidates all authority and power. So the only way that you can function in that dimension is to offer your life as a living sacrifice. And when that happens, you can now have access to the power of creation. You are transformed and made brand new in him. Number two, you can embrace his life though you are dead, yet you live again. As the power of resurrection. And then you can walk in the power of ascension to ascend and descend. And finally, you can walk in the power of revelation to appear and disappear. I hope you have gathered something quickly here. Take your time and share this video because we are on a mission to reveal the, glory, the great glory of the living God. What we are talking about here, this is just the beginning stage. 
But I'm going to go into the elaborate dimensions of the glory to show you the things that happen when you go even further. Beyond what you can find in any human cap, you know, uh, uh, faculties or capacity. Regardless of what institutions that we attended in this life. Regardless of how many degrees. This is a place where the sons are going to operate in the end times to allow you to accelerate. It's a passage, rites of passage to connect with the fullness of the Lord God. This is how we overcome the kingdom rulership of Satan. Finally, anywhere that the enemy has rulership, authority and power, they will keep enforcing it. So it doesn't matter what territory you move to. It doesn't matter what the domain you move to. It doesn't matter which boundary you move to. It doesn't matter where you go to. As long as they have rulership, authority and power, you may fight some demons and you may even win. But as long as the kingdom is there and you did not overcome the kingdom rulership, where that kingdom has no longer any right. You hear what the Bible said. Say God has taken you away from the kingdom of Satan and translated you into the kingdom of light. The kingdom of his dear son. That's to disconnect all the tie-ups, all the connections, all the rulership orders and authorities and powers that the enemy has uh, put in place in, the, in his kingdom to have certain impact on your life. But what are the processes that will be required for you to fully experience the realities of these things? It will take you the Holy Spirit. Remember that it's as it is in heaven, so also in the earth. So it's not only the physical process, but it's a spiritual process to get you to meet certain criteria in certain qualification so you can have access to certain abilities i'm done here let's connect later on again and keep moving forward if you have the grace to share this video share it with people and help them out in this hour we vow to reveal the glory of god that will deal with the kingdom of satan as a whole that's what the glory of god offers us until next time people